For those of you taking my Introduction to Psychology class, by this point in the semester, you must be thinking, man, this class is so different from what I was expecting, right? Because psychology includes a lot of fields that most people don't associate with psychology. But all that changes today. Today, we start talking about personality. And personality refers to our characteristic ways of behaving and thinking and interacting with others. And the person who really started the field of personality is Sigmund Freud. Now, one of the things I said at the beginning of the semester is that I didn't much care whether you learned anyone's names, with a few exceptions. And the number one big exception is Sigmund Freud. In fact, this entire lecture is devoted to Sigmund Freud because he's that important. Many people consider him to be the father of psychology. So we're going to talk about Sigmund Freud. We're going to talk about why he's important. Uh, his kind of therapy, Sigmund Freud developed the first kind of talk therapy or psychotherapy known as psychoanalysis, and it's still used today. We're going to talk about Freud's model of our minds and how we are driven primarily by unconscious aspects of our minds, that is processes that we're not aware of. We're going to talk about defense mechanisms and then we're going to talk about Freud's theory of personality development, which is based on psychosexual urges. So this will be interesting. So who was Freud? Well, Freud went to medical school and studied to be a neurologist. In fact, he spent uh, a lot of his early years as a researcher studying eels and looking for the sex organs of male eels. He never actually found them. Uh, but at a certain point in his research, he eventually opened a private practice to help people with what were referred to back then as nervous disorders. And Freud spent the rest of his life focusing on understanding the human mind and what leads people to do the crazy things that we do. So. Freud is known for creating psychoanalysis, which is a particular kind of talk therapy or psychotherapy, where a person comes in and you talk with a therapist about your struggles in life. Freud uh, lived and worked in Vienna, Austria, for most of his life, uh, up until 1938. In 1938, the Nazis made it very difficult for anyone who was Jewish to live or work in Austria. And Freud and his wife and their six children fled from Austria to London. And unfortunately, the year after that, um, Freud died of cancer. He was a lifelong smoker. He really smoked a lot of cigars. And eventually, that's what got him. Uh, one of Freud's children, Anna Freud, spent her entire life devoted to promoting the work of her father. She didn't, she never had children. It was just all about dad. You'll see that's interesting a little later. So I said Freud developed psychotherapy. He also came up with the first theory of personality, the first theory of motivation, the first theory of psychological disorders. It's a very, very influential person in the field of psychology. Freud focused on our early childhood experiences. He was a person who figured out that much of what we do as adults that's a little strange may be a reflection of what happened to us as children. And this is, frankly, the basis of a lot of different types of psychotherapy today. And that all uh, goes back to Freud. Freud also argued that much of our motivation came from unconscious desires, unconscious frustrations, internal conflicts that we weren't even aware of, and that the goal of psychotherapy was for the therapist to figure out what was going on unconsciously in their patients. He also studied how people coped with these unconscious desires and urges and frustrations. If you walk around CSUN, you'll see a bunch of coffee shops named the Freudian sip. This is actually a word play on Freud and a concept that Freud had that we'll talk about in a minute called a Freudian slip. But 
hopefully soon we'll all get back to being able to hang out at a Freudian sip and enjoy our favorite drinks. But just so you know, Freud developed concepts and terms that we use today. So the whole idea of an unconscious, that's Freud. Libido, uh, neuroses, it's like, oh my God, that guy's so neurotic. That's Freud, Neuro neuroticism. Uh, the Oedipal complex, which we'll talk about. The idea of projection or repression, repression. Oh, you're just repressing your anger. That's Freud. Oh, he's so anal. That's Freud. Oh God, she's so passive aggressive. That's Freud. Defense mechanisms, Freud again. Fixations, again, Freud. Um, so Freud impacted not only the field of psychology, but how everyone really thinks about themselves and other people. And because of that, um, I've listed a number of organizations here where Freudian psychoanalysts, so people who are still following um, either Freud's traditional theory or updated versions of his theory, um, work and conduct research. In Freud's day, one of the techniques that was used to understand human behavior was hypnosis. And it turned out that Freud was terrible at hypnotizing people. So he came up with a different technique called free association. And in free association, Freud might say, so tell me the first thing that comes to your mind or the first word that comes to your mind when I say mother. So let's have you do that now. What's the first word that comes to your mind when I say mother? Father, love, sadness. And what Freud thought was really important um, about free association is that it was a way to get into the unconscious that um, he made people really comfortable uh, during free association. So uh, traditionally uh, in psychoanalysis, people don't sit in a chair, they lie on a couch. In fact, this is a picture of Freud's actual couch. Um, typically in psychoanalysis, the therapist um, sits to the side so that the client or patient cannot see them. Um, and really the focus is make the person as comfortable as possible and just get them, just stop thinking, just think, what's the first thing that comes into your mind when I say cheating? And Freud thought, well, the first thing that comes to your mind, that association, that's telling you something about the unconscious, about what's going on in the person's unconscious. And that's free association. Another concept that I mentioned previously is the Freudian slip, which is a play off of the Freudian sip, which at CSUN is coffee shops, we sip coffee. But a Freudian slip is when you make a mistake in what you say or what you do or what you're writing. And Freud thought that those mistakes were actually windows into your unconscious, that the mistakes actually sort of gave away what you were really feeling. So for Freud, if you showed up late to a meeting, it meant you didn't want to go to the meeting, right? For Freud, if you forgot someone's birthday, it meant you were upset with the person. So for Freud, there were no accidents, right? That every Freudian slip, every mistake you made was actually informative. It told you something about what was going on unconsciously, your unconscious urges. Come back and we'll talk about Freud and his understanding of your mind.